I read a lot. Poetry, fiction, nonfiction. It's just a great joy of mine to read. And so sometimes when I read, I start to hear things. So certain words kind of bring sonic images to mind. And then uh, I'll jot down, if I'll, I'll just jot down the phrase, the sentence. Um, sometimes I carry it around with me for a while or it's just sitting on my desk for a couple of years and I keep looking at it. Um, and uh, if somebody asks me to write them a piece, very often I don't start from the text, but then um, as, I'm, as I have started on the piece, I'll read something and suddenly it's like, oh yeah, that's this piece. That makes, that makes perfect sense to me. So I don't know, it's nothing very systematic, um, but it is very powerful for me. The rhythm of installation work has influenced my concert music. So thinking about larger spaces, larger spaces of time and uh, more freer transformations of material that happen um, sometimes coincidentally in an installation. Um, uh, and then in music, it's, it's for the most part, the music I write is fixed in one way or another. So. Uh, but as I'm composing, I'm allowing things to mix freely, and then I decide, yes, that's the one, that's, that's what I want. And, I, and then I fix it for a piece of music in a way that I don't necessarily fix it for an installation. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. I didn't realize I was a woman composer until late in my PhD program. I, I was just writing music. I was kind of this nerdy, I was just ner nerdily writing music, you know, and I, <laughs> and it just didn't even occur to me. And then when I started to fall apart, and I think that that's some of what happens, I mean, I started thinking I was, you start thinking you're crazy. After, if you don't know about, or at least this happened to me, I didn't know about feminism. It was never in anything I had studied uh, as a musician. And I started feeling like there was something wrong with me, like the way I experienced myself inside versus the way I was being responded to in the world, especially as an academic, you know, um, you're in the academy, right? Which is a very kind of masculinist place sometimes. Um, I just started feeling like I was going crazy, you know? I, I wasn't sure what was happening to me. You know, it still is not great for women in graduate school. It's still this incredible minority. But you know what the other thing is that I found, you know, talking to my women students, it's hard to bring it up because they don't want to deal with it either. They don't want it be, to be true. <laughs> I really think that my goal has been to lead a creative life. Yes, there are a lot of nuts and boltsy things involved with being a department chair, with being a professor, with being a mom, with being a composer, frankly. You know, running out to the photocopy shop, going to the post office, so boring. You know, <laughs> I mean, there are these very boring aspects. But really, if, if you approach everything as a creative project, it gives you juice, right? It, it makes it feel much more 
like you're not abandoning your composing because I have to go in and build this music department today.